Hi everybody, good afternoon. There we go. Hi. This is book study. Hi, Nanny. I'm going to wait a few seconds, you all, and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, because we do have four chapters to read today. Hi, Marquita. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> I cannot believe we are almost done with this book, y'all. We don't have that much more to go. <laughs> Hi, Nora. All right, y'all. Hi, Misty. I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, so we are reading, if this is your first um, book study live, we're reading A Divine Revelation of Hell by Mary Kay Baxter. And all the information for how to find the book, well, not how to find it, but the title with the author is listed at the top. As well as the chapters we'll be reading today. We are on chapter 14. And um, chapter 14 is entitled, The Left Arm of Hell. If you've missed any of the previous chapters, you all, you can find it under our popular topics uh, portion on our page um, under book studies. Okay. <laughs> all right, you all. The Left Arm of Hell. A prophecy from Jesus to all. Hey, Carolyn. Is it Carolyn or Caroline? <laughs> we had rain um, yesterday, so I think we're probably going to have a little bit later on today, but it's pretty clear right now. <laughs> okay, so this is a prophecy from Jesus to all. Jesus said, these things are now beginning in the earth, are yet to be, and are soon coming upon all, the, I'm sorry, and are soon coming upon all the earth. The fiery serpent is part of the beast. These prophecies you are about to read are true. The revelations are true. Watch and pray. Love one another. Keep yourselves holy. Keep your hands clean. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Husbands and wives, love each other as I have loved you. I ordained marriage and blessed it with my word. Keep the marriage bed holy. Cleanse yourselves from all unrighteousness and be pure, even as I am pure. The holy people of God have been led away by flatterers. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Understanding will come to you if you will open your, your ears and listen to me. This is the Lord's message to the churches. Beware of false prophets who stand in my holy place and deceive with flatteries. O earth, my holy people have fallen as asleep to the sound of false doctrine. Awake, awake. I tell you that all unrighteousness is sin. Cleanse yourself from all sin of the flesh and the spirit. My holy prophets lived holy lives, but you have rebelled against me and my holiness. You have brought evil upon yourself. You have sinned and brought yourself into bondage to sickness and death. You have committed iniquity and have done wickedly and have rebelled against me. You have departed from my precepts and from my judgments. You have not hearkened to the words of my servants, the prophet and the prophetess. Curses instead of blessings have come upon you, and still you refuse to return to me and repent of your sins. If you will return and repent, and if you will honor me with the fruit of with the fruit of righteousness, I will bless your homes and honor your marriage beds. If you will humble yourselves and call upon me, I will hear you and bless you. Listen, you ministers of my holy word, do not teach my people to sin against their God. Remember that judgment begins at the house of God. Unless you repent, I will remove you for the, I will remove you for the sins you have taught my people. Do not think, I'm sorry, do you think that I am blind that I cannot see and deaf that I cannot hear? 
You who hold the truth in unrighteousness and line your pockets with silver and gold at the expense of the poor, repent, I say, before it is too late. On the day of judgment, you will, you will stand alone before me to give an account of what you did with my holy word. If you call upon me in repentance, I will remove the curse from your lands and bless you with a mighty blessing. If you will repent and be ashamed of your sins, I will have mercy and compassion on you, and I will not remember your sins anymore. Pray that you may be an overcomer. Awake to life and live. Repent to the people you have led astray and taught false doctrine. Tell them you have sinned and that you have scattered my sheep. Repent to them. Behold, I am preparing a holy army. They will do mighty exploits for me and destroy your high places. They are an army of holy men and women, boys and girls. They have been anointed to preach the true gospel, to lay hands on the sick and to call the sinner to repentance. This is an army of working men, housewives, single men, single women, and school children. They are common people. Far not many noble have responded to my call. In the past, they have been misunderstood and mistreated, abused and rejected. But I have blessed them with boldness and holiness and in spirit. They will begin to fulfill my prophecy and to do my will. I will walk in them, talk in them and work in them. These are they who have turned to me with all their heart, soul, mind and strength. This army will awaken many to righteousness and purity of spirit. I will soon begin to move upon them, to choose for my army those I desire. I will search for them in the cities and in the towns. Many will be surprised at those I have chosen. You will see them begin to move across the land and do exploits for my name's sake. Watch and see my power at work. Again, I tell you, do not defile the marriage bed. Do not defile the body in which the Holy Ghost dwells. Sins of the body lead to sins of the spirit. Keep the marriage bed holy. I made man for woman and woman for man and decreed that the two should be united in holy matrimony. Again, I say awake. I saw many other visions in the left arm of hell. I was instructed by the Lord that I must not reveal them now. Many of them were visions of the world in the end times when many of the people of God will fall away and be lost. In the visions, I was given revelations about the body of Christ, the ministry of the sons of God, the children of the beast, and the ultimate return of Christ. Later, you may reveal them, he said, but not now. This army, said the Lord, which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, will arise from the land and do great works for God. The son of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings. He shall tread down the wicked, and they shall be ashes under the soles of his feet. They shall be called the army of the Lord. I will give gifts unto them and they will accomplish my mighty works. They shall do exploits for the Lord of glory. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. This army shall fight against the forces of evil and shall destroy much of Satan's work. They shall win many to Jesus Christ before the day the evil beast arises, says the Lord. Jesus said, come, it is time to go now. At last, we were leaving the visions and the left arm of hell. I was very glad. As we departed, Jesus said, tell your families I love them and correct them in love. Tell them that I will keep them from evil if they will put their trust in me. Amen. Now we're going on to chapter 15, the days of Joel. I'm so sorry, y'all. My church is calling. <laughs> turn my phone off I heard a voice say right for these things are faithful right for these things are faithful and true again I was with the Lord in the spirit he was high and lifted up and his voice was like thunder behold O earth these things are were and are to come I am the first and the last serve me the creator for I give life not death Arise from your evil and call upon me. I will heal and deliver you. The things you read in this book are true and they will soon come to pass. Repent for the time is at hand and the Lord of glory will soon appear. Be ready for you do not know the day nor the hour. Great shall be the reward of those who await my coming. I will bless my little ones, those that have kept the faith and have served me in truth and righteousness. 
Before they know it, it will be upon them. I have prepared a blessing for those who have been faithful to their calling and those that have not denied my name. I say, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, I will forgive them and heal them and restore their losses. I desire to hear, to deliver, and to save all who believe and call upon my name. Sanctify a fast, call a solemn as assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the lands into my house and cry unto me. Alas, for the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. The day is at hand. Trust me, and I will restore unto you the years the locust, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the pommel worm have eaten. My great army, which I have called, will not break their ranks nor their stride. They will do marvelous exploits, and they shall not be conquered, for I am their strength. Their voices will sound like the trumpet, like the thunders they will sound, and all will hear and know that I am the Lord your God. Dear Lord Jesus, it is my prayer that I be counted worthy to be in this army. I want to be in this army, but I know I must be pure and holy as Jesus is pure and holy. By the blood Jesus shed, cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Help me to keep a repentant heart, free of all hatred and bitterness. Father, I know that many of your people are asleep. I fear you will, you will have to break our vessels of clay and humble us if there are to be fruits of righteousness. Lord, I do not want to go to hell again and have to stay there. Oh, Lord, help me to warn the people. Give me power to stop hell from enlarging itself. Help me and your people to be good, kind-hearted, forgiving and loving to one another. Help us to speak the truth at all times. I know that Jesus Christ is returning soon and his rewards are with him. I know that my message to the world is repent for the day of the Lord is at hand. Father, I do not want the blood of this people on my hands. Amen. Lynn, we're reading a divine revelation of hell by Mary Kay Baxter. Chapter 16, the center of hell. Again, the Lord and I went into hell. Jesus said to me, my child, for this purpose, you were born to write and tell what I have told you and shown you. For these things are faithful and true. I have called you forth to tell the world through you that there is a hell, but I have made a way of escape. I will not show you all parts of hell, and there are hidden things that I cannot reveal to you, but I will show you much. Now come and see the powers of darkness and their end. We went again to the belly of hell and began to walk through a small opening. I turned to look where we were entering and found that we were on a ledge beside a cell in the center of hell. We stopped in front of a cell in which was a beautiful woman. Over the top of her cell were the letters B.C. I heard the woman say, Lord, I knew you would come someday. Please let me out of this place of torment. She was dressed in the clothes of an ancient era and she was very beautiful. I knew that she had been here for many centuries but could not die. Her soul was in torment. She began to pull at the bars and cry. Softly, Jesus said, peace be still. He spoke to her with sadness in his voice. Woman, you know why you are here. Yes, she said, but I can change. I remember when you, when you let all those others out of paradise. I remember your words of salvation. I will be good now, she cried, and I will serve you. She clenched the bars of the cell in her tiny fist and began to scream, let me out, let me out. At that, she began to change before our eyes. Her clothes began to burn. Her flesh fell off and all that remained was a black skeleton with a with burned out holes for eyes and a hollow shell of a soul. I watched in horror as the old woman fell to the floor. All her beauty had departed in a moment. It staggered my imagination to think that she had been here since before Christ was born. Jesus said to her, you knew on earth what your end would be. Moses gave you the law and you heard it, but instead of obeying my law, you chose to be an instrument in the hands of Satan, a soothsayer and a witch. You even, you even taught the art of witchcraft. You loved darkness rather than light and your deeds were evil. If you had repented with your heart, my father would have forgiven you, but now it is too late. With sorrow and great pity in our hearts, we walked away. There would never be an end to her pain and sufferings. Her bony hands reached out to us as we walked on. 
my child, said the Lord. Satan uses many devices to destroy good men, good men and women. He works day and night trying to get people to serve him. If you fail to choose to serve God, you have chosen to serve the devil. Choose life and the truth will set you free. After walking for a short distance, we stopped in front of another cell. I heard a man's voice calling out, who is there? Who is there? I wonder why he called out. Jesus said, he is blind. I heard a sound and looked about. Ahead of us was a large demon with huge, huge wings, which appeared to be broken. He looked right past us. I stood close to Jesus. Together, we turned to look at the man who had spoken. He also was in a cell and his back was to us. He was a skeleton form with fire and small and smell of death on him. He was flailing the air and crying out, help me, help someone. Tenderly, Jesus said, man, peace, be still. The man turned and said, Lord, I knew you would come for me. I repent now. Please let me out. I knew I was a horrible person and used my handicap for selfish gain. I knew I was a sorcerer and deceived many for Satan. But Lord, I repent now. Please let me out. Day and night I am tormented in these flames. There is no water. I am so thirsty, he cried. Won't you give me a drink of water? The man was still calling after Jesus as we walked away. I looked down in sadness. Jesus said, all sorcerers and workers of evil will have their part in the lake, which burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. We came to another cell in which was a woman, was an, I'm sorry, which was another man. He said, Lord, I knew you would come and release me. I have repented for a long time. This man also was a skeleton full of flames and worms. Oh man, you are still full of lies and sin. You know you were a disciple of Satan, a liar who deceived many. The truth was never in your mouth and death was always your reward. You heard my words often and made fun of my salvation and my Holy Spirit. You lied all your life and would not listen to me. You are, you are of your father, the devil. All liars will have their part in the lake of fire. You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The man began to curse and say many evil things against the Lord. We went on. This soul was forever lost in hell. Jesus said, whoever will, whoever will may come to me. And he that loses his life for my sake shall find life and that more abundantly. But sinners must repent while still alive on earth. It is too late to repent when they arrive here. Many sinners want to serve God and Satan, or they believe that they have unlimited time to accept the grace God offers. The, the truly wise will choose this day whom they will serve. Soon we came to the next cell. A desperate cry of sorrow came from within. We looked and saw a skeleton of a man huddled on a floor. His bones were black from burning and his soul was a dirty gray mist inside. I noticed that parts of his body were missing. Smoke and flames came up around him. Worms crawled inside of him. Jesus said, this man's sins were many. He was a murderer and had hate in his heart. He would not repent or even believe that I would forgive him. If he had only come to me. You mean, Lord, I asked, he thought that you would not forgive him of murder and hatred? Yes, said Jesus. If only he had believed and come to me, I would have forgiven him all his sins, great and small. Instead, he continued to sin and died in them. That is why he is where he is today. He was given many opportunities to serve me and to believe the gospel, but he refused. Now it is too late. The next cell we came to was filled with a terrible odor. I could hear the cries of the dead and moans of regret everywhere. I felt so sad that I was almost sick. I made up my mind that I would do all I could to tell the world about this place. A woman's voice said, help me. I stared into a pair of a real pair of eyes, not the burned out sockets, which were the marks of burning. I was so sad. I shivered and I felt such pity and sorrow for this soul. I wanted so badly to pull her out of the cell and run away with her. It's so painful. She said, Lord, I would do what is right now. I once knew you and you were my savior. Her hands clenched the bars of the cell. Why won't you be my savior now? Big pieces of burning flesh fell from her and only bones clenched the bars. You even healed me of cancer, she said. You told me to go and sin no more lest a worse thing come upon me. I tried, Lord. You know I tried. I even tried to witness for you. 
But Lord, I soon learned that those who preach your word are not popular. I wanted people to like me. I slowly went back into the world and the lust of the flesh devoured me. Nightclubs and strong drink became more important than you. I lost touch with my Christian friends and soon found myself seven times worse than I had been before. And though I became lovers of both men and women, I never intended to be lost. I did not know that I was possessed by Satan. I still felt your call upon my heart and, re and to repent and be saved, but I would not. I kept thinking, I still have time. Tomorrow I will turn back to Jesus and he will forgive me and deliver me. But I waited too long and now it is too late, she cried. Her eyes burst into flames and disappeared. I screamed and fell against Jesus. Oh, Lord, I thought, how easily could that have been me or one of my loved ones? Please, sinner, wake up before it is too late. We walked on to another cell. In it, another man was in it, another man with a skeleton form and a dirty gray soul inside. Cries of such utter pain and regret came from this man, and I knew I could never forget them. Jesus said, my child. Some who read this book will compare it to a fiction story or a movie they have seen. They will say this is not true, but you know these things are true. You know that hell is real, for I have brought you here many times by my spirit. I have revealed the truth to you so that you can witness it. Lost person, if you will not repent and be baptized and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, this will surely be your end. This man is here, said the Lord, because of his rebellion. The sin of rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. In fact, all those who know my word and my ways and have heard the gospel but still will, will, not, will not repent are in rebellion against me. Many are in hell today because of this sin. The man spoke to Jesus and said, I once thought about making you Lord of my life, but I did not want to walk your straight and narrow way. I wanted the broad way. It was so much easier to serve sin. I did not want to, have, I did not want to be righteous. I love my sinful way. I desire to drink strong drink and to do the things of this world more than obey your commands. But I wish now I had listened to those you sent to me. Instead, I did evil and would not repent. Great sobs shook his body as he cried out in regret. For years, I have been tormented in this place. I know what I am and I know I will never get out. I am tormented day and night in these flames and these worms. I cry, but no one comes to help. No one cares for my soul here. No one cares for my soul. He fell into a small heap on the floor and continued to cry. We walked on to another cell. A woman sat picking the worms off her bones. She began to cry when she saw Jesus. Help me, Lord, she said. I will be good. Please let me out. She also arose and clenched the bars of the cell. I felt such great pity for her as she cried. Sobs shook her body. She said, Lord, when I was on earth, I worshiped the Hindu gods and many idols. I would not believe the gospel the missionaries preached to me, although I heard it many times. One day I died. I cried for my gods to save me from hell, but they could not. Now, Lord, I like to repent. It's too late, said Jesus. Flames covered her form as she walked on, as we walked on. Her cries still fill my soul even now. Satan had deceived her. With sadness in his voice, Jesus said, come, we will return tomorrow. It is time to go now. Ooh. Mm -mm. All right, y'all. Chapter 17. Hey, Shawanda. Hi, Luanda. Hey, Cindy. Hi, Lisa. Chapter 17, War in the Heavens. <clears throat> the spirit of the Lord was upon me, and again, we went into hell. Jesus said, I tell you the truth. Many souls are here because of witchcraft, the occult the worship of, of other gods, disobedience, unbelief, drunkenness, and filthiness of flesh and spirit. Come, I will show you a mystery and tell you of hidden things. I will reveal to you how to pray against the forces of evil. We walked into a part of hell next to the evil heart. Jesus said, we are soon going into the jaws of hell, but I desire to reveal to all that hell has enlarged itself. We stopped and he said, behold and believe. I looked and beheld an open vision. In the vision, Jesus and I were high above the earth, looking out into space. I saw a spiritual circle high above the earth. The circle was invisible to the natural eye, but in the spirit, I could see it well. I knew that the vision was related to our fight against the princes and powers of the air. As I continued to look, I discovered there were, in fact, several circles. 
In the first circle, there were many dirty evil spirits. I saw the dirty spirits take on the forms of witches and they began to fly about the heavens to do much spiritual damage. I heard the voice of Jesus say, in my name, I give my children power over these evil ones. Listen and learn how to pray. I saw an odd shaped form arise from another circle and begin to spin about and cast spells. I saw then that a demon had arisen and he was doing evil things to the earth. The demon had the spirit of a wizard. He would turn and laugh and from a, and from a stick in his hand, he cast evil spells on various peoples, people. I saw other evil spirits join the wizard and Satan gave, gave them more power. Behold, what you bind on earth, I will bind in heaven, said Jesus. Satan must be bound if the prayers of the saints are to be effective in these last days. From another circle, I saw another sorcerer arise and he began to give orders. Rain and fire fell upon the earth as he spoke. He spoke many evil things and he deceived the people on the earth. As I watched, I saw two more evil spirits join the sorcerer high above the earth. These all were these all were evil princes and powers of the air these gave their powers to witches who were gathered together in a certain place to do evil workers of darkness gathered around them the spirits came and went as they chose watch carefully jesus said for the holy spirit is revealing a great truth to you in the vision i saw terrible things happening on earth evil was magnified and sin abounded the forces of evil cause men to steal, to lie, to cheat, to hurt one another, to speak evil, and to succumb to the lust of the flesh. All kinds of evil were released upon the earth. I said, Jesus, this is awful to behold. Jesus said, my child, in my name, evil has to flee. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. As the evil spirits spewed their vileness and slander upon the earth, I saw the people of God begin to pray. They prayed in the name of Jesus and in faith. As they prayed, the word of God came, came against the evil spirits, which began to lose ground. As the saints prayed, the forces of evil lost their hold. Evil spells were broken. Those who had been weakened by the forces of hell were strengthened. When they prayed as in one voice, the angels of heaven entered the fray. I saw the holy angels fighting with the evil princes and powers of the air, and God's angels were destroying the powers of evil. I looked and behold, there were rows upon rows of angel forces with about 600 in each row. As the people believed God, the angels advanced. God gave the orders and mighty was his power. He gave great strength to his people and to the angels to destroy the works of Satan. God was fighting against vile in the sky. When the people prayed and believed God, the evil forces were destroyed. But when there was disbelief, the evil powers began to overcome. My people must believe and they must agree with each other and with me, said the Lord. If all things are to be put under the father's feet, Heaven and earth must agree if we are to destroy our enemies. As the praises of God's people began to rise from the earth, the evil forces retreated. I saw saints of God praying with all their hearts against the wiles, the wiles of the devil. As they did, evil spells and curses were broken and the saints gained the victory. This is what happened. As the angels of the Lord fought with the demons and forces of hell, saints were delivered through prayer. As the people were delivered, many praises rang out to God and the praises brought more, vict more victories. Only when the results of prayer were not seen at once did the praises cease and evil began to win the battle. That's good. I heard an angel with a loud voice say, O oh Lord, the faith of your people is weak. They must have faith if you are to deliver them from the hordes of Satan. Lord, have mercy on the heirs of salvation. The voice of the Almighty responded, Without faith, it is impossible to please God, but the Lord is faithful and he will establish you. Again in the vision, I saw God pour out his spirit on all flesh and the people believed that God would do all they asked because they were, they were his and sincerely loved him. They had faith in God and believed his word and God delivered them and the word of God grew in the land. The Lord said, all things are possible to them that believe. I watch over my word to perform it. You do your part and you can know that I will do mine. 
If my people will stand for truth and fight the good fight, wonderful things will happen as on the day of Pentecost. Call upon me and I will hear. I will be your God and you will be my people. I will establish you in righteousness, truth, and sincerity. In the vision, I saw Christians being born as little babies. I saw the angels standing over them to protect them from the harm. From harm, I saw the Lord of hosts fighting their battles and gaining the victory for them. Then I saw the babes grow up and harvest the fields of the Lord of glory. They were doing the work of the Lord with a glad heart, loving God, trusting God, and serving God. I saw the angels and God's word combined to destroy evil from the face of the earth. I saw peace on earth as everything was eventually put under the feet of God. Wow. Hi, Teresa. <laughs> Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. I agree, Dorothy. <laughs> I'm going to go back. Hi, Keisha. Hi, Keisha. Patricia, you can um look it up. Um, you can Google it. I don't have a link that I posted yet, but if you just go type in a divine revelation of hell. Actually, no, Aretha share a link for you all. Aretha shared a link that you all can purchase them together because there's two books. Hold on, you all. There's there's two of them. There's a divine revelation of hell and a divine revelation of heaven. So, But I know there's a combined one that you all can get. Hi, Belita. Hi, Shonda. I think I said hi to you already. Hi, Brianna. Hi, Anna. Hi, Trish. Hi, Susan. Hey, Alice. I think I got everybody. Hi, Veronica. Hi, Yvonne. If I missed you. Hi, Shan. Please forgive me. <laughs> I'm so We almost done now, y'all. Look, we literally have that little bit left. So we're almost done reading the book. I definitely recommend you grabbing a copy um, it's just a good read. It's so good. It really, really, really is. Um, and so when we're done, we'll be done with this on next Tuesday. We will go into reading a divine revelation of heaven, uh, for June. And I'll post the schedule for that. Um, yeah, we only have a few chapters left. We just did war in heavens. Yeah. It's not much more left. Hey, Yolanda. <laughs> hey, Rolan. So I'll wait just another moment, you all, if you have any comments or questions. Um, and if not, I'm going to hop off because I upload these lives to YouTube. So those that want to uh, listen in on the reading, they can just uh, listen in from YouTube, especially those that aren't a part of the group. If you want to share with somebody so they could just listen to it, they'll be able to. Hey, Brianna. <laughs> all right. While I'm waiting on you all to uh, make any comments or ask any questions, um, today is Tuesday. So tomorrow, Wednesday, is our fasting day from 6 to 6, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, liquids only. Liquids only. We have prayer at noon. So if you can, um, hop on for prayer at 12 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, definitely make time to pray throughout the day tomorrow if you're going to be fasting. What else, you all? And Keisha will be coming on at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Walk-In Wednesday. Hi, Portia. <laughs> hey, Sylvia. So other than that, I'm going to keep my book up here. I got to do a little cleaning. I literally got no sleep last night. I don't know. Y'all ever had those nights where you just can't sleep? <laughs> I was literally playing on my um, games on my phone all night. I just couldn't rest. I don't know. <laughs> Betty, I'm good. And praise God, I'm good. I'm well. Just a little sleepy. Carol, I'm in Alabama. I'm in uh, Dothan, Alabama. Dothan, Alabama. <laughs> Betty, you got a copy of this book? Someone got you this book? Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Chris. Thanks for being here. Yeah, Carol, I don't know. It was just like, it was just, I don't know. I slept a couple of hours early in the, uh, you know, early on. But then, like, I woke up around 12. Did not go back to sleep. So... You know, it starts hitting you kind of midway through the day. You kind of like, 
<laughs> so I'm gonna try to stay up at least to about six because you know I want to try to sleep all night tonight if I go to sleep now I will probably sleep on and wake up about 10 o'clock tonight we don't need those problems <laughs> okay you all keep in mind you got a friend from Dothan uh, keep in mind, you all, you can utilize our uh, email, which is weightlossandlifestylechanges at AOL.com. I know that we don't really utilize it, but anytime you have something you want to share with myself or one of the other leaders, you can email us there. Um, if you can't reach us on the messenger, I think we have to kind of be friends with you all. If we're Facebook friends, it should come on through through messenger. But if you're not Facebook friends with a person... It, it does not, for me, mine don't pop right up if we're not Facebook friends. I have to go search for it. And I don't know to search for it if, you know, I wouldn't know to search for it if I don't know you messaged me. So um, I know that's the issue that I've run into on my messenger. Yeah, Yolanda, me too. From time to time, I have the same um, issue. I'm just glad it doesn't happen often. I definitely don't have any issues sleeping. I'm that person that falls asleep in seconds. Like... I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what that's about. I can go to sleep in seconds, but I'm a light sleeper. Um, and I don't know. I think, I don't know. Y'all pray for me. I may have to just get up and start praying because I'm. it's like, I don't know. I didn't sleep well the other night either. And it's like around the same time that I'm, that I'm uh, either awakened or that I'm awake. So usually that means the Lord wants us to pray because I'm not even sleepy. So usually praying time so but you all continue to be safe um, I'm a little concerned with uh, things opening back up but I'm happy to hear that a lot of people are still staying home there are people that are going out but you all I just feel like the only way we can really get over this is if we stay home <laughs> not so much get back out there yet um, because I just see another wave coming you know another uh wave coming of this um this uh i don't want to call it a flu this virus so mm. you have luanda yeah i don't know what's going on i think that's it carol it's probably just time to get up and pray you know that's probably what it is i'm sure no it's not really around 3 a.m for me it's usually around like midnight between midnight and three like between that time so hmm coronavirus thank you uh carol <laughs> like the virus yeah um mm, i don't know we got to pray about that because i don't i don't know i don't know eventually it will be over of course we know that but i don't want more people to die because you know they're telling us to to come out or go back to work and things like that um, absolutely, Phyllis. Absolutely. Definitely got to have faith. But God also gives us wisdom. And we just got to use wisdom. Even when we're being told to do something that's not wise, we have to use wisdom. So, um, I'm just going to be praying, you know, for everybody that's heading back out. Um, so, it's going to be all right, though. <laughs> all right, y'all. I'm going to hop off. I think I see one more comment coming in. You say praying is good. It'll put you to sleep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, you all. Have a good rest of your day. Hi, Delisha. And like I said, just be safe. Um, and uh, stay prayerful. Amen. <laughs> Amen, Carol. Amen. You're absolutely correct. You're right. I mean, it's just, you know, I think that people should do whatever God leads them to do. That's that's the kind of person I am. If God told you to do it, then go ahead and do it. So, um, um, I'm just, I was telling my aunt earlier, I'm just glad that I'm okay with being at home. I really am. And I know a lot of people aren't, but I'm okay with being at home with my children. And um, I feel bad for them because I know they want to do things, but I'm just going to we just got to pray for the kids and I'm going to get a swimming pool, put it out back so they can have that. They usually get a pool out back during the summer. So I'm going to go ahead and get a pool and let them enjoy that and get them some other activities. They can um, play in the backyard. So, 
That's all I can do right now <laughs> and stay prayed up. So thank you, D. I will. I'm going to try to stay up until 6, which I know I will be able to. But probably 6 o'clock tonight, I'm probably going to be <laughs> knocked out. <laughs> all right. I'll see you all tomorrow. I think I'm doing prayer tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. And I don't know. I haven't talked with other leaders, but it's open right now. So more than likely, you'll probably see me tomorrow at uh, 12 p.m. Central Standard Time for prayer. OK, and if you miss it, you can catch the replay. All the prayers are under the tab at the top uh, under prayer or our Bible studies are under Bible study. If you want to go back and hear some of the previous readings. <laughs> Amen. OK, you all. I'll see you tomorrow. Mm-hmm.